Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of SkyMall, Baby Einstein, P90X, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Steve Wexler, who's not one of America's leading direct response copywriters, but the leading America's direct response copywriter. America's leading director. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have you explain that in a second because I had to correct that. He's helped his clients generate millions of dollars with his control beating packages. What's especially interesting is that with his decades of experience, as I go through your site, Steve, you've created successful direct mail packages, print ads, website copy, radio, and much more. But I have to go back to the leading direct response copywriter. Yeah, um, yeah well, I, I used to be a screenwriter for Charlie Chaplin. That's how old I am. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, my, my slogan is America's leading direct mail copywriter. And when I did an interview with uh, Bob Bly, he said that was quite pompous. Bob, if you're listening, you remember the story. Um, he said, how do, you, how, do you, how do you qualify that? And the, the answer is simple. My job is to... My job is to write copy and get around objections like Bob had. And every trade show, inevitably I run into my uh, contemporaries and always walk into the bathroom back and forth with copywriters. And I always make sure when I'm walking with other copywriters to the bathroom at the trade shows, I'm the one who's leading. I'm ahead, I go in first, I get out of there. And that's how I came up with it. So it's justified, Bly, okay? So does that have any, anything to do with the prostate uh, packages you write? About the bathroom? No, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm well versed on prostate. I never pee. I haven't peed in ten years. Okay. So it's, 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 pigeons kind of take it away from me. Um, yeah, because I saw that in your side. I did see America's leading direct response copywriter, and I purposely put in who's one of because who am I to say who's the leading direct response? So I'm glad you made that correction for me. I never said I was the best. I just said I was leading. Got it. So. Steve, I always ask, because you know, it's Inspired Insider, um, what's been the lowest moment and then how you push forward through the tough time? We mentioned one before where I, was, you know, I had a big house and cars and kids and dogs and, and no money coming in. That was, that was tough in starting a business um, because I, I've always worked for somebody. So making that jump from becoming an employee to an employer was, that was a rough one. That was a rough one. Um, I've had other obstacles. But like uh, last year, I um, was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, wow. So, and I, I beat the crap out of it with my green belt and hurts. And, uh, and that wasn't the worst part of last year. But I uh, um, um, never let it go, and I'm good. And, and the only reason I brought up the cancer story is because somebody else had one. I thought mine was better. <laughs> trying to talk about Yeah, nothing... I mean, I think that's an important point to talk about because I think when people talk about their companies and their successes, that's usually what gets highlighted in the real world stuff, health problems or other things never kind of make their way in. And it's reality you have to deal with that and deal with family and deal with your business too. How do you do all that? The biggest fear was, man, how am I going to, you know, keep the people that depend on me alive? You know, what am I going to do? Am I going to die? Is it all the stuff that the mortality? Right. So it's to hit you, and you, you know, and you know, you have to keep yourself grounded. And, and, and I think what really got me through it more than anything, and it was a very tough form, aggressive form of cancer, that one of the very few people uh, lucky enough to beat it because of, and I'm going to say this to everybody. Uh, early diagnosis, go for your exams early, go for your you know, your prostate exams, go for your, uh, uh, it's what saved my life. But I think work is what pulled me through it. It distracted you mm -hmm. through the method writing and stuff like that, brought you into other worlds, and I was able to escape from that, at least for the hours that I was writing. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, there's nothing like uh, getting an Oscar just bringing all this money before I, you know, meet the Grim Reaper. But uh, luckily I beat it, and uh, yeah. life was good. Um, yeah, congratulations. That's 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 thanks. Yeah. Um, what type of cancer was it? It was pancreatic. Oh, my which, God. Yeah, they say uh, the worst. within, uh, if you know you have it, you're probably going to be dead within a year. 
So that was the story I heard. But because I went through this early screening, uh, my sister uh, urged me to do it. Um, really? And I'd been be estranged, estranged from her for years. And out of the blue, she said, go get tested. Why did she say that? Were you having some? She got it. She got it. Really? She got it. And um, just went. And the, when I went to the doctor, he said, look, you should have come to me in three years and been dead in four. Wow. Um, That's amazing. But I, 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 because of early detection, I, I, thankfully, yeah. I got through it. There was, it wasn't even, you know, it wasn't even a factor. I got through it. Wow. I mean, early detection is one thing, but you have this kick. I'm going to kick anyone's, you know, butt mindset. I mean, that's just how you are. So that has something to do with it. Grow up with long hair during the disco, disco era in Brooklyn. <laughs> you got to survive. Did right? you get your butt kicked a lot or what? Well, if you got your butt kicked, if you got your butt kicked, then... You know, you were you were less than a human being, and if you won, you were a musician. You said, "I have long hair," and everybody else was doing that, that disco thing. Okay. So you know, we were sort of like the freaks and the outsiders back then. But uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta be competitive, and you had to fight all the time. And, yeah, uh, that's the way it was growing up in Brooklyn. Yeah. No, thanks for sharing that. It's, uh, congrats on just. Being the Most of my clients don't know that know this, so uh, if they see this, it's like, I'm alive and healthy, guys. And yeah, you might kill it alive back. and healthy and <laughs> kicking more, stronger than ever. On the other side of things, Steve. Um, so, what's been one of the proudest moments and accomplishments? The proudest moments. Yeah, it could be business and personal. I, 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 I don't know if it was a moment more than a. a just a gradual rise of success. And I guess the proudest moments I have happen every time that I get a, uh, a royalty check. And they say, man, this was a hit. Tell this me about one of the royal, big royalty checks huh? and what you felt. Wait, wait, repeat that question? Tell me about one of the big royalty checks and then what you did with one of them. I, you know, there's anything I did with it. It's just, yeah. Well, I mean, when you didn't have money, you took all your money, you spent it on kids' toys. So you must have done something with it. Squirreled it away. I'm a Jew. You know that. Right? <laughs> That's what we do with money. They said Jesus saves, but Moses invests. Very important. I mean, you didn't buy yourself any fun toys or go on a vacation or oh, yeah. something to celebrate? Of course. You know, uh, your lifestyle goes up and you go on cruises and you do some fun stuff and hit your bucket list. But uh, nothing, nothing that stands out in my mind. You kind of like to, to pin me down to these little snapshots. I, I, I can't remember them. Well, that's what happens when you have decades of experience. So I find with your, it's hard to choose one. You it's know? hard to choose one. Yeah. I've, I've had more fun than any guy should, you know, lay claim to. I've, I've had a lot of fun. As far as uh, my career, I've done a lot of things that I'm proud of and a hell of a lot of things that I'm ashamed of. But um, it, it's been a fun ride. And uh, not ready to get off yet. Yeah. You know, there was one uh, quote on your website from um, Joe Russo. And he says, we're mailing 1.5 million packages per month. Yeah. That's a lot of packages. That's a lot of packages. That's a, that's a lot of cruises. It's good. Yeah. So what are they, what are they mailing? Uh, I don't remember. I haven't looked at my website in a while. I don't know which one you reference, but uh, I, I, I don't remember. But uh, I've had a lot of those. I'm I've just had, curious. Like that's a large number. It was a health package. Yeah. You know that's that's the bulk of the stuff that I do. I mean, I do a lot. I work in all worlds. I've written hundreds and hundreds of psychic pieces for uh, psychic pieces. Europe, yeah, you put the babushka on your head and stir the cauldron and you have a little wart on your nose and, you know, you, you, Dave, you know Dave Klein? We've, we've come, chatted. Come, come on, come on. He's at me. Okay, goodbye. My best friend, Dave Klein. One of the most intelligent guys I know. Um, I'm sure you're going to have a, a, an episode. We, we chatted with, yes, we've chatted. He said he's going to meet you in Chicago. Yes. He's, uh, one of the most gracious uh, 
smartest, best business guys I know. It's only a hell of a lot. I've been uh, affiliated with Dave for about a decade now. And, uh, How did you meet? Dave called me up and saw that I was uh, the leader of the pack in, in uh, the copy world for a while. He said, hey, you know what? I've got this big 30-foot booth. Why don't you not even spend money on your own booth? And again, going back to my area, just oh, that's funny. Just work out of my booth. And put your picture back there, and yeah, come on down. So we started. I, I I did a trade show with him, and we hit it off like brothers. And, uh, Do people was, tell you you could you look alike or no? Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. And, and I insist that you know if you're right, I'm the much better looking one. Always that way. Um. So. Steve, a few few other things. I want to hear um, any any best advice that you have for people writing copy. You know, obviously, there's a lot of copy. You have writers that work under you, but a lot of people are probably working solo. What uh, what what should we leave them with that they should start? Because we talked a lot about different things here. I, I, again, I think the most important part is to you know, speak to your audience as you would speak to a friend. Give advice to your audience as friends. Solve their problems as you were a friend. Yeah. And be sincere because people, you know, people. a lot of people out there may not be educated, but they're smart. And they know when they're being bullshitted. Um, speak in common language. You know, anybody could use a $10 word. Smart people understand $10 words. Not so smart people don't understand them. But they also understand, smart people also understand the one dollar words. So if you can if you can speak in a New York Post type mentality where everybody understands what you're saying, uh, um, you'll get a lot more viewers. Yeah. You know, readers. You know, without pandering to them, you know. You you have to make sure that you're not pandering to them, but but speak simply, speak concisely and speak honestly. Howard Stern's rule. Howard Stern said it. You know, I, I don't know. Have you ever seen the Howard Stern movie? No, Where, a long time ago. He had he had a revelation, and they gave him this thing about this restaurant or some you know department store. Oh yeah, I go there every day. I buy everything from the store. And he goes, I never even heard of this place. I don't do this. And, and he, he realized at that moment that being honest with his viewers, my readers. Is, is the most important thing. And if you don't believe in the product, which, hey, we don't believe in everything we sell, you better believe it while you're writing it. You better convince yourself that this is the, 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 the best thing ever while you're writing it. Yeah. You can let go. You can let go of it later, but you better believe it. You know? And if this pill doesn't make you feel 30 years younger while you're writing that, feel it. Feel it. Believe it. Want it. Want that product. There's, there's no way you can sell anything you don't want. Right. So, Steve, I have one last question uh, before I ask it. First of all, I appreciate your time. Where should we point people towards? Where should they check out? Check you out online? Uh, I guess I would go to this phone or dial 631-736-6565 and speak to Alice, and we can uh, uh, help you sell your products as well. All right. And uh, wexdirect.com. There's a lot of cool, uh, all the images, direct mail packages, print ads, magalogs, all that fun stuff is on there. I think I'm even on a flying carpet on one of the pages. You are? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. You yeah. do come on. Um, my last question is uh, what keeps you going? I mean, obviously, you don't have to keep doing this. You know, it's interesting. I asked the same question to one of my employers years ago, a very wealthy man, and he never never stopped working, never stopped working. And I said, you have enough money to have your kids, 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 kids live for the rest of their lives. Unfortunately, I'm not in that position. Uh, but I said, why did you do it? And he looked at me and said, notches on the bell. Because it's not about the money, which is really helpful. I like money as much as anybody else. It's about the successes. It's about being the best. It's about, you know, am I the best? Bob, you're the best. You know, Bob Bly, you're the best. 
I want to be one of the best. I, I want to have a legacy. I want people to remember, you know, um, at least some of the words, something I could share with them. Yeah. It's about competitiveness. It's about Brooklyn. It's about being beat up by the disco guys. You mentioned Bob. Who are Bob, other colleagues you respect? Uh, um, Peter Bechtel, I think, is awesome. Awesome writer. Uh, Bob Bly, again, awesome, different. Um, uh, this is dozens. Uh, uh, Clayton Maypiece uh, uh, is amazing. Although he's a teabagger and hardcore Republican, so I don't agree with anything he says, other than his copy is brilliant. Um, and, and then in the, the non copy world, again, uh, guys like Adam Moran here and Dave Klein and uh, uh, just dozens and dozens of people I respect. Yeah. Talking a lot, whether you're writers or not. Yeah. Steve, I appreciate it. Anything else? Any other stories that I'm that we didn't talk about? I know you you made a few notes. Um, what did we not hit on that would be a fun story to tell? Don't let attorneys scare you when you're writing. I try to write. Well, first thing I do is I ask my my clients well, one in ten. What's your aggression level? But everybody knows. If you're at a 10, you're going to sell a lot. Mm. At a 1, you're not going to sell anything. So what's your aggression level? If you're at a 5, you're going to write to a 7. If you're at a 7, you're going to write to a 10 or a 9. And a lot of people get flustered by That's an term. interesting question. I wouldn't have even guessed you asked that question. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's because, you know, I'm going to write to a 10, and the guy says, I can't say anything. can't make any claims on my product. Hmm. Unfortunately, in the supplement world, there's a lot of great products out there, and there's a lot of rules and regulations when you can't, can't cure anything. Even though I can I can cure aging, aging isn't a disease, I won't use the word cure. Um, so I, I don't let the lawyers scare me. I try to work my magic against them. They're only working with words, so I work with words. And I'll give you a good example. Um, a few years back, a lawyer said to me, I couldn't say now available without prescription. Hmm. And a lot of these, you know, you get a, a, a bad attorney and he just wants a red line and everything you do and you got to write over, you can't say anything. And he gets his debt put on his house and the client to sell nothing, <laughs> you know. So he said, I can't say not available without prescription, now available without prescription. And I asked him what his objection was and he wouldn't tell me, he wouldn't tell me, and I pushed and pushed till they just hate my guts. And finally he said, you can't say it because it inferred that it had a prescription before and it doesn't need it now. And that's legal. So say, now available without prescription. Now available. How about available now without prescription? It's available now. You don't need a prescription. Oh, yeah, you can say that. So it's, it's your words against theirs. You can, you can figure out ways around everything. Write to say what you want to say and then fix it later. Don't, be, don't let him scare you off. Else you're going to have milk toast and that's not work. Why do you think he pushed back so much and didn't tell you why? Because he was nervous, I guess, that if you came to a solution, he would look like the, the you know, ineffective. Yeah. You know, a good attorney, and there's a lot of great ones, uh, I would say Andy Lustigman, you know, in Manhattan, was terrific, understand that you have to make a living. And they understand that you have to sound aggressive. And they'll give you really bad ways to say stuff compliantly. And then you can figure out good ways to say it and sell it. Yeah. Bad attorney just redlines. And, I did my job. Don't worry about making money. If you don't make money, I'll go to another client that has money. You know? So the attorneys, you know, us copywriters work with attorneys constantly, especially in, in regulated fields like supplements and drugs and things like that. But don't let them scare you off and kill your copy. Write to the aggression level of the client. And you'll deal with the attorneys later. Just make sure the attorney understands from the beginning. You're not going to be easy. Yeah. You fight back. And either you're going to win or they're going to win. But at the end, the client wins. Yeah. Anything else on that sheet that we make sure to cover? <sighs> Cure for the absent-minded. I don't know why I wrote that. Uh, it, just, it sounds like a headline that I'm going to use later on. But I don't know. So that's the only thing I left off. If nobody steal that yet. I got to get that out first. Okay? <laughs> Steve, I appreciate it. I want to be the first one to thank you so much uh, for your time on this. 
No problem. Yeah. Great it's great talking. All right. I'll speak to you soon. Take care.